Alright guys, today we're going to be cutting a bone-in rib, and I didn't mention this before, but this is a 10-inch scimitar, the new knife I got. So, in case you're wondering uh, where to get these, I'll put a link in the description. off the back here, you can see it. Uh, you definitely don't want to eat that, it's going to be pretty tough. So, And you don't need to take much off, you just skim it off. Right. There we go. So that's pretty much all you want to do. You don't really have to get too deep on that. Next thing you want to do is chime off this rib right here. You only take it maybe a quarter, maybe a half inch off that. Sometimes this little end bone right here kind of protrudes out a little bit, so you can usually just come in and cut that out. There we go. Try not to cut too deep on that. So get that nice and squared up like that. And if this is too thick, you can leave some of this fat on here, but if it's too thick on there, you can always skim that off. Just like that. Score this end up. You're not, not wanting to take very much off there. This is a uh, pretty high dollar cut of meat, so you want to make sure to preserve as much as you can. Alright, next thing is cut it. We like to cut it here at about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. So round about right in there. Tell you guys, I'm really loving this handle compared to uh, to my old wooden one. Um, right here on the spine, it's uh, kind of really tough on your uh, on your fingers to kind of work with a little bit. So uh, I'm definitely like how liking how kind of kind of thinner and smoother this this handle is on this knife. So I've been using this one here for probably five six years now, and I'm Definitely wishing I would have gotten this one a lot sooner. Alright, next thing we're going to go take it to the bandsaw and cut in between these ribs.
Next thing you want to do is trim off a little of this fat. Um, you want to leave as, uh, as much on there as you can without having it look too over, overly fatty. So I'll show you what I mean here in a sec. So that right there is a perfect chuck end rib steak. Look at that thing. Prime grade, man, that thing is beautiful. About an inch and a half thick. Okay. Let's continue on with the rest of these. If you're cutting these for any kind of uh, meat shop, they usually have a stagger them. Uh, one rib going this way, one rib going, rib going that way, back and forth. It just makes it look better on uh, the presentation. guys, we're all done. Now all we have to do is tray it up and uh, make it look nice in the display. So when you're training these up, as I mentioned before, one rib going left, one right, back and forth, all the way down. Most meat shops like it like this, so you're just uh, learning. That's uh, what a lot of shops like. So every, every shop's different, though. That's just what we like here. This doesn't look very good all going like one direction. Retraining these, you have uh, older ones you need to put on there just on your last layer. You start from the bottom, work your way up. And then you start putting the old ones on, all from the day before and they're not too old. You never want to, uh, you never want to tray these with the uh, the bone showing. And if you if both sides look like that, pick the best side to display. So uh, that side looks better than this side because what's going to happen is that bone right there is going to start to turn you know, like brown or like a black. It's not going to look very good. guys and we're all done what do you think well I need to get back to work and kick you guys out of here thanks for joining me today my name is Brian from Beer Bandit Outdoors and I will see you on the next episode